Hey, what's up, InStyle? My name is Paul Wesley, and you are watching this guy. This guy. My birthday is July 23rd, 1982, 1982. But July 23rd, so I'm the first day of Leo, in case you were curious. I was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey, representing. Very difficult question. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love the proximity to Manhattan. No, I'm kidding. I, uh, I, I, lo I do love, even though the show gave it a bad name, I love the Jersey Shore. There's so many parts of the Jersey Shore that are so beautiful that weren't in the TV series, The Jersey Shore. I am a big fan of oat milk, whatever, cappuccino, whatever you want to give me with oat, I'm in. Do I have a favorite food? Gosh. When I go to a, an Italian restaurant, I always get just like a spaghetti pomodoro and I know if it's a good restaurant, if the spaghetti pomodoro is really good. And so that's like, if you can get me a really good spaghetti pomodoro, that's what I like most. I have a favorite movie. My, I mean, I don't, I do. I have, there's so many movies that I love, but I have a very specific sort of, I'm drawn to Goodfellas. I watched it when I was younger and I just fell in love with the, the world that he had created. And I, I grew up on the East Coast and I, I just, um, yeah, I loved it. You know, I used to listen to like, uh, like Easy e and Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and I had all their, and it wasn't an album, it was like cassettes, you know, for, for you kids. We used to listen to cassettes, it wasn't always. <laughs> I was gonna say CDs, but you probably don't even know what CDs are either. So anyway, it was cassettes not the iTunes thing. Well, I grew up in New Jersey where the bagels are really good and I can't seem to find a good bagel in Los Angeles, so that's a problem, but I'm all about the everything bagel. Give me the everything, always. I don't know, I went to an astrologer once and everything he said was incorrect. <laughs> so maybe I just got a bad astrologer. I know that Leo's love their hair and i also know that leos are tend to be like the you know the loudest in the room kind of thing i'm not really that and i think it's because i'm a bit of a blend of the leo cancer and the cancers are a little more subdued I have my coffee situation also if i'm in la i'm with my dog who's laying right here that's why i'm pointing to the ground if you want to pan down yeah, there he is. He's also wearing a Versace collar. I did not buy it for him. Someone else did. First thing I do is hug him. We have this thing, because he likes to sleep on the couch. He doesn't really like to sleep in the bed with me. So then I'll go to the living room and then I have to hug him. Then I get my coffee. The last thing I do before I go to bed, I probably shouldn't. I've been trying not to look at my phone. Late, what helps me fall asleep is reading. It's like it's immediate, within like two pages, I'm, I'm out. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to make a very concerted effort to stay off my phone and just read. I'm gonna cry right after this interview uh, with regret. No, I think, when did I cry? Actually, I cried last night. I didn't cry, but I got teared up. I'm very late to the game and I was watching Succession and it was the scene where, spoiler alert, Logan dies and his kids are on the phone saying goodbye to him. And I, it was just this, it was fantastic. And I teared up. I was kicked off the hockey team. I didn't have anything to do. I started doing theater and I, I grew up in New Jersey, which is really close to Manhattan. So I started doing these little acting workshops in Manhattan for fun. And an agent saw me and said, do you want to audition for things? And I said, sure. And then boom, that was it. And then, you know, cut to 20 years later. But I, I also just sort of always imitated people growing up for whatever reason. And I sort of always enjoyed going into like other people's, I don't know, mannerisms or into their mentality. And so I think I sort of just had a genuine interest in that for whatever bizarre psychological reason. I'll have to ask my parents. My earliest, earliest role was an extra in a, a commercial for a theme park and I had to ride the roller coaster over and over and I vomited and they fired me. But after that, my career got a little bit better. I don't really miss anything about playing him and I don't mean that in like a 
I just kind of like eight years is a long time. But I, you know, I love I love how dynamic he was over this because the show ran for such a long time. In order for it to not become you know monotonous, every season he sort of had a different arc and at one point he was like pure evil and he started out as the good guy and then he ended out ended up as the good guy but i like the sort of challenge of trying to keep the character fresh a fan theory and a fan fiction about you know me and ian summerholder being lovers but other than that no no fan theories so obviously i was very aware of star trek it played such a huge part of you know, television and sort of American culture. I had watched the original series and also the J.J. Abrams films. I actually also had run into William Shatner multiple times at, you know, various conventions because we were, you know, both in the sort of sci-fi circuit. I knew him a little bit, so it was kind of this ironic sort of situation when I got a phone call saying, hey, do you want to, you know, talk to, talk to the producers about Kirk? I was like, what? Really? Okay. <laughs> My favorite Star Trek episode from the original series is City on the Edge of Forever. I love Kirk's moral dilemma of meeting somebody who then he can't sort of take with him when he goes back to in his world that he lives in. I thought it was like a really powerful episode. And also just something about Kirk and Spock being fish out of water, really special. And we actually did a little bit of that in season two of Strange New Worlds. So that was very exciting. The minute I looked at my dog's eyes, I knew it was love at first sight. No, I do, I do believe in, I mean, yes, I believe in love and first sight in the sense that you know immediately, or at least I know immediately, whether this person is a fit, you know? And sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with physical attributes. Obviously that's a part of it, but sometimes it's just sort of this energetic pull that you can feel. I don't know about craziest thing I ever did for love, but when I was really young, I took my dad's credit card and I bought a like, I'm not exaggerating, like a nine foot teddy bear and had it sent to a girl's house. <laughs> I, I mean, I loved Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. I thought it was so dynamic and interesting. There are some photos of me when I was like 16, 15. I swear to God, it's like, I've never seen anything like my pants look like I'm swimming in my pants. And they're these super wide, I used to wear these like Jinko jeans or something. I mean, I'm like, they were like this wide, the actual like, you can see my, my feet. And there's just some photos where I'm just like, wow. Boy, I'll tell you, if I hadn't, if I wasn't playing Captain Kirk, I'm, I may very well have said Captain Kirk. <laughs> I guess if they were to remake Goodfellas, which I hope they don't, maybe I can have a part in Goodfellas. Working with Martin Scorsese, I don't think he would remake his own film, but one can dream. I'm trying to think of the Hollywood Chris's. <laughs> Remember the guy Chris Kattan from Saturday Night Live? <laughs> Chris, who else is there? There's Chris who? Chris Pine. Hi, Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth, everyone loves him. Yeah. Dreamy guy, dreamy. Chris Christofferson? Chris Angel? No. <laughs>